Okay, so first, hi guys, I'm Neha. I'm a director of product at Oscar Health. I'll go a little bit more into what I do, but before I, I go too far into that, just a little bit about myself so you know who's talking at you for the rest of the evening. Um, I come from the good old state of New Jersey. I spent most of my childhood there, a little bit uh, growing up internationally, but most of my childhood in New Jersey. I uh, didn't know what I wanted to do when I grew up, so I went to the University of Michigan and did a business degree, just because I thought, you know, business, they'll set me up well for the future, we'll find out where it takes me. Um, over the course of my time in Michigan and my summers, I actually didn't really do many internships that had anything to do with products. I kind of had a smattering of experiences. I, um, Actually, I walked into college thinking I wanted to do finance. The internship my freshman year, I did finance, and I realized I really don't want to do finance, so it was a really good user, I mean, a good experience there. Um, spent a uh, summer in Cairo because I also minored in Middle Eastern Studies, a really cool experience. And then um, if anyone went to business school undergrad or uh, graduate school, you know how important recruiting is during the process, and it's like the thing that everyone does in the fall, and uh, back then, product management wasn't really like a thing that people were looking at. Um, you either did consulting or finance. I crossed out finance, so I chose to do consulting. Um, so I went and joined um, IBM, learned quickly that, again, that wasn't the right fit for me. It was a very large company. I wasn't really uh, understanding where I fit in, what I was working on, and how it was impacting things. Um, and I also learned that I really wanted um, a lot more focus on my career development and having mentorship. So my path to product management, um, so like I said, took the consulting path. Um, so after I graduated, um, I joined American Express. They have um, an internal consulting arm called the Strategic Planning Group. I chose to go there mostly because it was a small team. I thought I would get a lot more career development. Um, and I learned quickly uh, uh, that I really enjoyed tackling problem problems within the tech space. So. Uh, one of the projects I started working on was looking at the digital payment space. So this was before Apple Pay, before Square really hit the market. Uh, so I spent a lot of time trying to understand what Google Wallet was doing, what NFC was, what's this crazy thing that everyone's talking about, how can phones make payments, um, and how would American Express fit in that. Um, really enjoyed my time there. That exposure to tech uh, really kind of sparked my interest. Uh, while I was working in this group, um, someone that I worked with moved to another role uh, a year before I left the, 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 the team, and she had an open role in her team, and it was a product management role. She was like, hey, I think you can do this. Do you want to come join? I was like, I don't know what this is. Let me find out. Uh, and it sparked my interest. And that's how I land landed in product. Uh, everyone has a fun story about how they ended up here. Uh, usually it's like by accident, uh, everyone I met. Um, so that's how I ended up in product. Um, at American Express, in product management, I worked on this product called Bluebird. It's, I think it's sunsetted now. Um, but it was focused on building an alternative banking platform for the uh, underbanked population. Um, and so I purely focused on, well, my official job responsibility was uh, the user experience to sign up for the product. Um, really interesting time, though, because American Express was just experimenting, going into Agile. It's like a large company. Um, they, they gave us our own office in um, Soho. We got to wear jeans. It was like a big deal. Um, and um, it was chaotic for a year. Uh, just imagine moving an old school org to something brand new. So the chaos actually presented a lot of opportunities. So I raised my hand for a lot of things outside of my job responsibility. So I uh, wasn't getting to work closely with engineers in my, my defined role. There was someone going on maternity leave and they need someone to cover for her. I was like, I'll do it. Um, there were random fire drills that happened. That was like the year of credit card breaches. Uh, so like anytime anything went wrong, I raised my hand to, to drive those initiatives. And uh, I can tell you like raising my hand really exposed me to a lot more outside my domain and got me to work with different parts of the organization. And also understand how different things connected um, and allowed me to talk a lot more to the product I was working with rather than just the silo I was working in. And then three and a half years ago, I joined Oscar. Um, so I'll go a little more into what Oscar is in a bit, but um, I started off working on our internal tools. Um, so 
it is a huge complex industry and so there were a lot of teams that we needed to support like our servicing teams, our sales teams, etc. cetera. I started my year just working with all these teams and then um, this was, we were much smaller, we were like 150 people and so everyone wore a bunch of hats. A year and a half later, I got placed in a role that um, oversaw provider data infrastructure. Um, don't have a technical background, never did data. I was like, what am I doing? Uh, kind of just dove into it. Um, honestly, and I spent two and a half years doing that and it was such an incredible experience. I learned so much. When you're working on infrastructure, you kind of have to understand whole, how the whole business works and how everything connects to it. Um, I just became an expert at so many things that I would never have predicted um, just because I was kind of thrown into it. And I'm going to dive into that a little bit more um, when I talk about user-centric product development around infrastructure. Uh, but a um, really great experience. And now, for the past year, I've been managing a team and um, oversee all of our products that we do for our doctors, hospital physicians, around our network, etc. Things I learned along the way. Uh, raise your hand. Uh, it's really, really helpful for you. Um, it's helpful for the company. It's a win-win situation. As long as you can make sure you deliver on your primary goals, it never hurts to learn more. Um, take on the not-so-sexy stuff. Um, when there was a giant Target credit card breach, no one wanted to be the person that figured out what happened and how to get everyone's new cards replaced at American Express. And I raised my hand and I completely learned everything end-to-end -end outside of what I owned. Um, and so it made me more valuable and I also found that I learned a lot more. Bill trust. Can't tell you how important this is. Uh, I think my entire career has been uh, because of the relationships that I built with the managers that I've had. Um, the person who took a chance on me to, to join product ever since then, um, my growth. Um, and it really stems from a obviously delivering, uh, having honest conversations, admitting when you don't know something but having the confidence to go figure it out just having the humility and just having that constant feedback. Um, ask for feedback. Um, this is something that will never stop being necessary. I will do this till the day I retire. Uh, once you get past the challenges of learning how to execute and build and ship products, there's also the human aspect. You're gonna be working across companies and uh, different teams as you grow and more, grow more mature in your uh, career. And um, that never stops getting um, uh, challenging and so it's always important to have a really uh, trusting relationship with the people that you work for and constantly asking for feedback. Keep learning. Um, I'm going to jump into this a little bit more further down but that's product management as well. Always take on new challenges, take on new areas that might be new to you but uh, keep learning and like flexing your skills. It could be new content, new types of relationships that you build, uh, anything really. And then the key to a good um, product manager is asking the right questions. Um, no one expects you to be an expert, but everyone asks you, expects you to ask the right questions and connecting the dots. So who here has heard of Oscar? Awesome, cool. Uh, so Oscar started five, six, five years ago. Um, the goal of it was um, really to make healthcare uh, more accessible, uh, more transparent, transparent, and more affordable. Um, who here has had gone to a doctor's office and gotten a bill that like just don't understand at all? Yeah. It's kind of sad. I mean, these are the most critical points in your life. And to get something at the end that just asks you for an exorbitant amount of dollars without being able to decipher what that is, it's really, really just, it's uncomfortable. It's, it's life-changing for certain people. It um, makes you feel helpless. And it's just not um, where we want to be as a society. Within the country itself, we spend so much money, a huge percentage of our GDP on healthcare, and our quality of care is not that much better. So there's something wrong here, and there's something to be fixed, and um, that's what we're trying to do. Um, the next uh, is my favorite ad we've ever had at Oscar. Um, so we started out with, you know, here's our mission, and then we kind of took a little bit of a snarky tone. Uh, we were the new kids on the block and we were trying to share how we were different. And uh, one of the things that we highlight in this ad in particular is um, telemedicine. So virtual care was something that insurance companies never really pushed or uh, encouraged, but it's actually really valuable a source of care and it's also very accessible. It's a win-win. Um, it's a lower cost of care and it's also really easy for a member to just, you know, video chat or message or, you know, call from bed. Um, we were the first insurance company to introduce it as a free benefit. 
since then a lot more have done it, which is great. We're happy to see the industry move in that direction. Um, but yeah, just <coughs> emphasizing the point that we came at it from a very member-specific, user-specific angle. We've gotten a little more, um, we've evolved our brand a little bit. Um, we saw a lot more ads with cartoons in it and decided it was time to refresh. Um, but the message and mission remains the same. We really want to make healthcare easy for people. Um, and a lot of that goes beyond the member experience. Like visually, um, there's a lot that happens behind the scenes um, and the bones of how the company works and how insurance works uh, in order to enable all the things that we want to enable. Cool. So who are our users? Uh, an extremely long list of people. Uh, so I talked about members a lot, and ultimately our, our mission is to, in the end, make healthcare more affordable, accessible, transparent to our members. But in order to get there, there's a whole village of people that need to, to line up to get there. And so we build products for not just members, we build products for our concierge teams, so these are our servicing teams. We build products for our physicians and nurses that interact with our members. We have employed physicians called VPCPs in our um, office that we build tools for. We have operational teams that build our networks, um, that process our claims, that pay our bills. Um, we have a data and analytics team. We consider them clients and customers as well because they need to have access to data in a way that allows them to experiment in the way that they want to so that we can const constantly evolve and uh, kind of build on the insights that they're, uh, they're sharing with everyone. Regulators are users. Um, we're in a heavily regulated industry. We have to be super compliant. It's important. Um, and making sure we're lining up with their expectations as well. And this is just like a fraction of all of our users. And so that begs the question, what do we consider a product? Um, lots of things. Um, so more traditionally, you would imagine a product is what you would see as external users. Um, so there is <clears throat> our member acquisition channels, so which is what you would sign up for your plans with. Um, there is our mobile app and our member web. Um, there's a provider portal that our doctors interact with. But then we have a lot of internal products. And so virtual care pl platforms, so when we talked about telemedicine, there's a whole internal platform that we're building out to support that. Messaging service. So we have enabled our members to be able to message our doctors and our concierge teams, and we've built messaging services in-house. Um, by the way, a lot of this uh, in-house build is because, um, A, because we want to have a little more control of our user experience, but B, uh, it's an interesting time in the sense that there's a lot of players entering the tech space, but there weren't a lot of startups at that point that were HIPAA compliant, so we actually had to learn how to build a lot of our stuff. Um, concierge tools, so enabling our concierge teams to give a really great experience to our members when they call in. Uh, we have a whole suite of tools for them as well. Um, and then for our operations teams, so for example, for our network management team, having tools to manage all the contracts that they sign um, so that all the things that happen downstream of that go smoothly. Um, and then we also talk about infrastructure as products. So what I worked on, provider data infrastructure. Um, is like the core source of truth across the entire company on who our doctors are, what networks we have, what our contracts look like, and anyone that needs to know any information about our doctors have to access this eventually. And so the product managers at this level have to understand how the users across the company access and use that information and make sure uh, that everything is, our data models and our services are built to support those things. And then our, you know, like our claims adjudication system, which is like kind of the heart of an insurance company, is a massive thing that we're building out. But again, more of a back-end infrastructure, but something that we call a product as well. Can you talk through like how you do that information? Yeah. Um, so um, we've, built and refi we've built and refined this process, and there's definitely more room to grow. But um, what happens is every year the company defines like our two to three primary goals. Like we're going to we're going to focus on growth, and we're going to focus on reducing medical costs, and that's going to be more important than X Y Z. So that kind of helps us across the company kind of factor in you know what can we do to support the primary goals within the company, and then each product manager then takes those goals into account and then looks at their backlog and their list of ideas and their roadmaps that they projected to figure out what would best support those business goals. And that's kind of their proposal. 
these product managers also are supporting a bunch of other teams that have other ideas of how they can best support the goals. So they work with stakeholders to talk about how they can best support their initiatives. And so the PM is then responsible for working with all those teams to best prioritize within themselves. And then the managers, like us, we have to coordinate and make sure everyone's lined up. Um, I know it sounds like a lot. We've actually got it down well oiled. We all do it within like a few days. Um, because the product managers are keeping on um, top of all their needs and asks over the whole quarter. Do you guys meet, like, meet, like, meet regularly? Do we don't meet. Next to each other? Oh, the product managers? Yeah. Oh, we all sit next to each other. We meet every other week. Um, so the way it works is the whole product org meets every other week and we talk about like, like decisions that the company's made, anything really like we send out a, a like a, uh, I don't know, what you, uh, like a survey to see how everyone's feeling, if like that's a thing that we want to talk, anything that's kind of top of mind for that's organizational. And then each sub team, so like me and my team meets every other week too to talk about our area um, because I line up with our operational teams that also are our stakeholders. So it's a lot of like making sure everyone's uh, getting all the information that they need at the right time. Um, so talking about the product management development cycle. So like I said, this is not a science. Uh, and you've probably seen a version of this somewhere or the other. Um, it's not rocket science, really. But um, if you think about product management, it's really you need to make sure you have a clear goal. Uh, once you've defined your priorities, what is this problem you're trying to solve? Then try and understand your user and what you're actually trying to solve for a user, how they would behave. Um, this one might be kind of like interesting, but I'll explain it in a bit, but understand the ecosystem that your user um, lives in. Construct a hypothesis, test, roll out, measure, do it again and again until you feel like you've hit your goal. Um, today, I'm just really going to be focusing on understanding your user and understanding the ecosystem. Um, and based on my experience, based on the different products that I've worked on. Yeah. So I thought it would be helpful to go through um, those buckets and talk about how I thought about users in each of those um, um, experiences, how they're pretty similar, but then there's also nuances to consider. Um, I think this one's uh, something I'm still learning as we go along, but um, uh, it's definitely helpful to consider because I think there's a lot of content out there about external user applications. So visual design, user experience, you're building a mobile app. There's tons of content out there about thinking about user testing, how you think about user-centered um, design, um, how you build prototypes, how do you have interviews, et cetera. It follows the same product development life cycle, um, but I think this is the thing that has like, the most support out there. Um, so I'm not going to spend too much time on this. Um, what I do want to spend more time on is, so if you think about inter internal user applications, um, First of all, they're incredibly important. Um, without them, your product is not as good as it's going to be, especially if you work in a company that's extremely multi-channel. Like, your digital is one aspect of how your users interact with you, and so it's really important to keep in mind everything that happens behind the scenes. And so I think internal tools are really important. And so things about internal tools that are very similar is you have to have a deep understanding of your users, how they take what their goals are, uh, what their preferences are, what their skill sets are, et cetera. I think the thing that's unique about internal tools, it, it weighs more on user experience than it does on visual design. Um, and so you're going to be thinking a lot more about users that are doing the same task over and over again. So they're typically more power users. So how can you get them to execute a lot faster on certain things or execute um, more accurately? So you're really focused on functionality, efficiency, um, kind of getting the job done rather than sort of a visually pleasing experience. Although some people may emphasize that as well, and I don't think that's a bad thing, but if you're working with constrained resources, that might not be the case. Um, the other positive about internal user applications are like your users are right there. So you can get feedback like within a second, and I do, trust me, like if it doesn't work, I will get a ping, and it's like we got to fix it. Um, so the, the whole process of like, Testing is a little more risk-free because you have people right next to you that you can explain things to, get honest feedback, ask questions, um, work with staging links so you don't need to have them touch the real thing, but they can play around and see how they interact. Uh, even pilot some things in a very like contained way um, because they're kind of driving to the same goals you are. So I think that's really positive because it makes that cycle a lot better.